It's been nice chatting. Jack, well, good luck with them. See you in another life, yeah? Crossing paths and intersecting lives. In some sense, I think this show is about how we're all intertwined in our lives. The linkage between these characters is an important part of their journey and connects it metaphorically to the kind of journeys that we all have in our own lives. But the question remains, is it all for a reason? I fell in love with the wrong guy. He conned me and embarrassed me. He was a bad guy. I have a son who's about your age. We find out, for example, that Jack and Claire have the same father. I don't even know your name. Although they don't know that they are half-brother and half-sister. I want it to stay that way. These are all stories about what are the series of events that led them to get on this plane. Because everything had to happen exactly the way that it did happen. And when they bump up against each other, you realize many of them wouldn't have made the choice to get on that plane were it not for other people. Tell me, what's a uh, walkabout? The walkabout is a journey of spiritual renewal. You want to tell me something, Rice? Uh, no. The most significant event in Hurley's life was that he was the lottery winner. That he's worth somewhere north of $150 million. I've had some bad luck, too. My uh, grandpa Tito died of a heart attack. And the first house about my mom burnt down. He bought himself a chicken shack restaurant. It's hit by a meteor. Or is it a meteorite? It's bad luck either way. He comes to believe that his life is cursed. On the island, he's the guy that everybody loves and gets along with. And they pour papayas. At the same time, he is hoping that this island has shed him of his unlucky curse. I hope. There is a Dharma bus on the island. He decides that getting this car running will really be a manifestation of the possibility of hope. Oh! Ah! Ah! Son of a bitch. Ah! <laughs> the van actually represents a little more than just that because Hurley finds a dead body in the van. Poor Roger. Work, man. <laughs> I'm a janitor? He is, in fact, Benjamin Linus's father. A shocking revelation that we've made recently is that Ben came to the island when he was a young child with his father, who was a janitor working for the Dharma Initiative. We know that he had a troubled relationship with his daddy. It's your birthday. Sorry, I forgot. It's kind of hard to celebrate on the day you killed your mom. We went for a hike. You had to come early. Now, she's gone. And I'm stuck here on this island with you. And that led him to become a fairly dark and twisted individual. I've missed her too, maybe as much as you have. But the difference is that for as long as I can remember, I've had to put up with you. Goodbye, Dad. Many have wondered what became of the Dharma Initiative. We learned the answer when Ben led a mass extermination and emerged as the leader of the others. You want us to, um... Go get his body? No, leave him out there. We discovered that the others and the Dharma Initiative are not the same. So while Sawyer is sitting there next to the skeleton drinking beers, they don't realize the sort of dark story behind this van that has actually unfolded. He's drinking beers with a skeleton and Correct. he's not aware that there's anything dark about that? No, he's having a good time, believe it or not. I mean, you get your kicks any way you can on the island. Ben would be very happy if he was able to be the leader of the others and was to grow them into a prosperous society. And now John Locke has shown up, and John Locke has sort of exhibited certain specialness, and that's really threatening to Ben. What if I told you this? Somewhere on this island, there's a very large box, and whatever you imagined, whatever you wanted to be in it, when you opened that box, there it would be. That was a metaphor. That? The whole island is a magic box. The presence of Anthony Cooper gave Ben an opportunity to challenge Locke. When people join us here on this island, they need to make a gesture of commitment. That's why you're going to have to kill your father. A challenge he knew would end in Locke's disgrace. I'm sorry. He's not who we thought he was. That is, until Richard proposed an alternative. Why would Sawyer kill my father? He doesn't even know him. Keep reading. Sawyer, when we first meet him on the island, he's carrying around this mysterious letter. You want to know what kind of human being I am? Read it. Dear Mr. Sawyer, you don't know who I am, but I know who you are, and I know what you've done. You had sex with my mother, and then you stole my dad's money all away. Get under the bed. Don't Open make a sound. So he got angry, and he killed my mother. And then he killed himself, too. A very big thing that we learned about Sawyer is that his name isn't Sawyer. The man who conned his parents is named Sawyer, and Sawyer has sort of taken on his name in a bizarre homage to this man that he wants to kill. We come to discover that the original Sawyer is actually Locke's father. 
this is an incredible coincidence as far as he's concerned, but something that Locke knows about, and that's why he puts them in a room together. And now Sawyer has this opportunity to do what he's wanted to do for so long. Ray. When you look at Cooper, he's basically responsible for Locke becoming the man that he became, and he's responsible for Sawyer becoming the man that he became. Thank you. Neither of those men would have ended up on Oceanic 815 were it not for this guy. Locke's return made it clear to Ben that he was indeed a threat. You said that if I killed my father, you'd tell me everything I wanted to know about the island. So why don't you start at the beginning? Ben takes Locke to this cabin as sort of a litmus test to find out if Locke is indeed special. And the way he can determine whether Locke is special is whether he can commune with this mysterious guy, Jacob, who is obviously above Ben in the hierarchy. Help me. And Locke hears Jacob say, help me. What did you just say? And that is enough for Ben to realize that Locke represents a massive threat to his primacy as the leader of the others. So he lures Locke out to this ditch where all the dead Dharma bodies were taken. These are my people. They came here seeking harmony, but they couldn't even coexist with the island's original inhabitants. I was one of the people that was smart enough to make sure that I didn't end up in that ditch, which makes me considerably smarter than you, John. Why did you do this? Because you heard him. Now I need to know what he said. He said, help me. Well, I certainly hope he helps you, John. 